Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through the uh, train body, which is part of the model train unit uh, for introduction to engineering design, which is part of the Project Lead the Way curriculum. Before we get going, it's just a, important to, to note a couple of things, okay? First of all, make sure that every single time you create a 2D sketch, that that sketch is fully constrained before you do anything else, before you finish the sketch, before you extrude, before you do any of that stuff, because if you fail to fully constrain your sketches, Later on, you're going to have huge issues with things just not working like you think that they should work. Um, so keep that in mind. That's, that's a big thing you'll see. You'll notice all of my sketches are fully constrained before I go forward with them. And I use that through the use of geometric constraints when I can and dimensioning when I can't use constraints. Um, another thing that we've learned over time uh, is that it's important to keep your sketches simple. So things like fillets and chamfers and so on and so forth, when you can do those things in 3D mode instead of within the actual sketches, that are really, really going to help you out. The last thing is, uh, as I go through and I create this train body, keep in mind that there are many, many create, uh, good ways to create the exact same thing. So what you see in this video is only one way that you could follow. If you can find a different way to create the exact same part, then more power to you. Let's start off by doing this. Let's sketch the front surface. No trimming involved with this. When you start trimming things out, you have to add in extra dimensions or extra constraints to get things to line up. So with just the dimensions that I have there, I've managed to make this front surface, which is just a combination of a rectangle and a circle. After you fully constrain that and you finish your sketch, you're able to extrude the full length of the train body. And when I say extrude the full length, I mean the entire depth, including that part where the engineer sits that's in the back of the train. Okay, Go ahead and go all the way the full depth of the train body. After you get done with this, we're going to flip around to the back side and create a sketch. And on the back surface of that body, that sketch is going to contain a point, which is dimensioned in the middle and up a little bit. You can see that that's where the, the hitch magnet is, um, or you can, you can see that uh, in, in dimension drawings that you have. And you're going to simply create a rectangle and a circle, and you're going to have those kind of intersect. Now, it's very important. This is probably one of the most commonly missed steps, is that the bottom right corner of this rectangle that comes up, down, over, and up. This needs to be constrained to the corner as well as this one it needs to be constrained to the corner that's already there. In order to get this green outline around the shape, in order to use this shape that I've already drawn, I need to project geometry and click on the shape. That allows me to actually lock into the corners like this. Okay, So a rectangle, and then you're just going to cut it off right here with a circle, and then you're going to trim out the outside. Okay. After you get done with that, then the next step, is just to extrude forward the appropriate distance. So you'll see now why we extruded that first shape back all the way. It's because it wouldn't have mattered. We're going to cover it up with this additional shape in just a second. So now we have the back of the train body created. I'm going to flip to the side. I'm going to draw a circular cutout after I start a new sketch right on that surface. I'm going to draw a circular cutout. And then after I draw a circle, I'm going to draw two straight lines, one from here out and one from here out. Okay and I'm going to trim off the remaining circle pieces so that it looks like it's straight on the edges, right? It's more of a U shape than it is a circular shape. You do have to have a couple dimensions to set the position and the size of the circle to be correct. Once you get that fully constrained, then the next step is just to do a simple extrude cut, and now you have the back of the engineer's uh, area created. Now, I'm going to flip around to the front, front side here. We're going to place three points on the front surface, Notice that they're fully constrained. Yet again, I've got the position of all three points locked in as far as left and right and as far as up and down. I did use some geometric constraints, for instance, to say that horizontally, these two points here were aligned, so they are level with each other. Once you have those three points created, then you can go through and you can use the hole feature to actually drill in and create those three holes, the necessary size and the necessary depth with the point angle. That's very important. So the front holes are now created. Now, I'm going to go work on the stack hole next. In order to do that, I needed to add a work plane on top of that curved surface. And there are multiple ways to do it. Your teacher can walk you through it if you need help. Um, I like to use the tangent to surface and parallel to plane option whenever I can. And so that's what I used, and it created a work plane. You can see it here, and here's a side view or front view of where the work plane is. You can see it's resting right on top of that circular piece on top. Once we have the work plane, then we can sketch on the work plane. So you would simply come over and click on the work plane and choose New Sketch. And when you start to sketch, so you can see here's the bottom where the engineer sits, here's the front of the train, you're just going to simply place a point. I used the geometric constraint to say that it had to line up geometrically with the midpoint right here. 
and that way it doesn't move left to right and it's locked into place and then I just simply dimension it back from the front surface of the trim. Once the point is created then you can use the whole feature and you can make that work plane that you created invisible by right clicking on it and unchecking visibility. Now you have your smokestack hole created. We're going to flip around to the side now. We're going to put points on the side of the body. Again, I used geometric constraints, and I said this point here and this point here needed to be horizontally aligned. And that way I only had to dimension one height instead of doing both heights. You can do both heights. It's just as easy. But geometric constraints just seem to be easier over time if you get used to them. So we got these points locked into place. Whenever that occurs, then we can go through and we can use the whole feature, and we can create a threaded hole using the correct options. We can create a threaded hole that goes into the proper depth. That is not a through hole, by the way. That does not go all the way through. You can't do that because otherwise the threading on the opposite side would be incorrect. Once we have that whole feature in place, we want to repeat the process on the other side, but it's easier than that. Rather than go draw the points on the opposite side, on the back side of this, it's easier to do this. Place a work plane in the middle of the body that cuts it in half. We can do this by choosing the option mid-plane between two planes. And whenever I choose that, I'm going to first click on the right plane right here, this surface, and then its counterpart on the far side. And it's going to put a plane right in the middle. And then what I can do is I can use the mirror feature. I can say I want a mirror, and I choose these holes as the feature. And then I choose the mirror plane to be this work plane, and it flips over and it puts the holes on the other side, as you can see here. So I mirror those across to the same four holes on all four places. Now we're going to go through and we can fill it except for the drill holes. We're going to fill it every single edge. So you can see I've shown that here. That rounds everything and makes it all nice and neat. And then I'm going to go flip around and you could have done this before the fill. So we're going to flip around to the back and we're going to place one more point on the back surface. This is going to be where the hole is located for the hitch magnet and the hitch peg. So once you place that point and it's fully constrained and it can't move left and right, it can't move up and down, we use the whole feature one more time and we are done. Now, one last thing, as part of this project, you're supposed to customize it. So don't forget, after all is said and done, go ahead and change the colors. Add sketches with text, and then after you use the text tool and you finish sketch, then you can choose emboss and raise that text. Um, feel free to add pictures. If you go into a sketch mode, you can add an image. And after you add the image and you finish the sketch, then you can use what's called the decal tool. So you can choose an option that says wrap to face, and you can do things like put Thomas the Train's face on the front of your engine things like that. We want you to get personal with this. We want you to make it creative. We want you to have a little bit of fun with it. So customize the train body as you see fit, as well as the rest of the train parts as you go through this project. If you're done with this and you made it all the way through, congratulations. That's one of the harder parts to do, and it's right off the bat that we do that train body. So you're well on your way towards having a model train that's working and animated and everything else that we need.